Welcome to Avila Day. In this video, I'm going to outline 10 key concepts in the work of Julius Avila. The first is the absolute, the metaphysical transcendent truth, which is manifested in the inherited ancient wisdom of all civilized peoples and is higher than life. Avila counted as civilized peoples, the Greeks, the Romans, the Persians, the Indians, the Chinese, and the Japanese. Second key concept, myth is truer than unrecorded history. The absolute, since it does not belong to the profane material world, is more accurately recorded in myth than it is recorded in events. Number three, esoteric knowledge. Esoteric knowledge is secret knowledge only for the select few, as against the exoteric knowledge of the masses. Virtually none of Evola's writings are intended for a mass audience. He viewed the plebeium with absolute disdain, but rather he wrote for the aristocrats of the soul who seek something higher than the animal instincts. He explores some specific esoteric knowledge in the hermetic tradition and the mystery of the grail. Fourth key concept, the four castes. Priests, warriors, merchants, peasants. These were the four castes outlined by Hesiod, traditional Hinduism, and in ancient Persian writings. Evola believed that while the priest caste had predominated in the East, in the West, it was mostly the warrior caste that had prevailed, but both were infinitely preferable to rule by merchants. This brings us on to the fifth concept, which is Kali Yuga and the Four Ages. The Golden Age, led by a warrior priest king or divine king in a solar phase, degenerates into a silver age where warriors have lost their intemporal status and now are mere military leaders who require the support of a priest caste who then come to take over and usher in a feminized lunar phase which then degenerates further to a bronze age led by the dominance of the merchant caste who completely dissolve transcendent values into mere matter this finally gives way to the kali yuga the dark age which evola believed we are living through right now in the Kali Yuga, all the energies are downwards, any sense of transcendence is lost, and society becomes entirely profane. Tradition and hierarchy have been entirely inverted before its final stage, which is the rule of the peasants or the mass man. By this stage, all values are reduced to matter, machines, dysgenic egalitarianism, and the reign of abstract quantity. The next key concept is Zenitia, the condition of living abroad or being absent from one's homeland, to live surrounded by barbarous people and customs, away from one's polis, an exile from the world of tradition. And this is the basic attitude outlined in Revolt Against the Modern World. The next is Apolitia, abstention from active participation in the construction of the human polis, an inner attitude of indifference and attachment. You must become a differentiated man, says Evola, and this is the attitude cultivated in both men among the ruins and particularly Ride the Tiger. The eighth key concept in Evola's work is autarkia, self-sufficiency and spiritual independence. Evola maintained that there were two paths to achieve liberation from the conditioned world, the path of action and the path of contemplation. He explores various ways to achieve this liberation in the yoga of power, which explores uh, the left-hand path, the path of action, and the doctrine of the awakening, which explores the right-hand path of contemplation. He also returns to the left-hand path in Eros and the Mysteries of Love. It is important to note that no 
element of Avila's thinking is shrouded in mysticism or mumbo-jumbo, the goal is always absolute self-control and self-mastery while being fully conscious. There is no element of escapism, no recourse to the subconscious, taking mind-altering drugs, looking at crystal balls or tarot cards, losing oneself, getting in touch with nature, or any other such woolly, modern-minded nonsense, all of which are critiqued as false spirituality in the mask and the face of contemporary spiritualism, which was reprinted recently as the fall of spirituality. For Evola, spiritual initiation and awakening can be achieved through discipline alone. Number nine, no dialogue with modernity. There is no negotiation with subversion, Evola says. He asserted absolute truths that were not up for debate and as such did not seek to persuade anyone, and nearly always placed the focus on self-questioning and to the cultivation of an inner self. And finally, tenth, the spirit always comes above the blood. For Evola, spirit was the fundamentally defining feature that dictates hierarchy and practically everything else. The regality of spirit comes above the regality of blood. He also saw this as being true of races, whereby somebody might be one race by birth, but spiritually come to belong to another by taking on their animating essence. Now do stick uh, with us throughout the rest of Evola Day. There is a, a whole uh, lineup of uh, videos, streams, interviews, all dedicated to Evola uh, for the rest of today. Uh, there is a whole schedule. The next video will be along in about five minutes or so. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Buy Foundations of Writing on the Academic Agency. To write clearly will help you to think clearly. The ability to communicate ideas in lucid prose is foundational to success in many areas, and it is a basic requirement in every walk of life. You will learn the parts of speech and come to understand the core functions of the English language, sentence construction and syntax, punctuation, style, and common mistakes. Once you see how mistakes are made, you will not unsee them. You will know for the rest of your life. Foundations of Writing. Buy it now. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. And if you really like my content, maybe consider joining the channel or donating or maybe even buy a mug. I am grateful for all of your support. Now get out.